Hi, Ren. I thought I'd take you out on another photo job I'm doing. I got this basically one large room. There's a small hallway behind there and a small room with a sink, restroom, and then this open garage area. Let me just give you a quick tour of what I brought. My OM-1, and I've kind of gone back to the 7 to 14 uh, millimeter from Panasonic. And of course, I got my Manfrotto uh, tripod, O55X Pro-B. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mention this. GD3WH uh, Benro gearhead. I have my uh, C1 and C2 and C3 all set up. So C1 is my basically bracketing mode. So I bracket the room. I take plus or minus two EV, so three shots plus the normal. And then the C2 I set up for my flash photography. So that's basically manual at 250th of a second. Uh, and I have the aperture the same on the both at f5.6. So on micro four thirds, you know, that gives plenty of depth of field, especially for a space like this. And base ISO 200 is fixed also. Because I'm on a tripod, I don't have to worry about shutter speed as much. And then for flash, I almost don't even need flash in here. I, I probably won't even use this. I could probably just do a bracketed shot. I'll definitely need it for the bathrooms and the, and the two smaller rooms back there. But uh, for these large spaces like this, just an HDR bracket will do. There's a little bit of natural light coming in through the uh, front doors, but it's, it's not too bad. And then this space here, there's almost no natural light coming in. And what I like about this space is, you know, all the lights work. If you look at the ceiling, I mean, they're different colors and stuff. But fortunately, this space, you know, getting the white balance right is not so critical because uh, it's going to be refitted anyway for whoever else is going to be buying into this. Um, and that's one of the reasons I like doing commercial properties is because a lot of times they're open spaces like this, and then being uh, critical on color, it's not quite as important, right? Now in terms of height, this is about halfway between the floor and the ceiling. You know, that'll help me with making straight lines and not having any kind of perspective errors. In terms of framing, a space like this, I'll just do uh, four corners, right? That corner, that corner, then this corner. And of course, this last corner here, I kind of overpacked for this job because it's, it's, it's pretty far away from my house. So if any particular component fails, you know, I have a backup, so I have backup camera, a spare battery, spare memory cards. And for the backup camera, I just brought the M5 Mark III. It'll, it'll do just as good a job as the on one for a space like this. Okay, a little bit more leveling. This is the uh, camera's view of the space. So I think um, typically I like to do two walls. So I'll do this wall and that wall. And then one last note is I just use the uh, uh, depth of field, right? One third, two thirds. So I focus about one third of the way in the frame and then everything will be in focus. It's a problem with B-roll, right? You have to constantly move the camera. And I have a two second delay set up for the bracketing. Actually, this water fountain might be good to get in. Cause you know, I like to always show as much information about the property. Water fountains are definitely a plus. <laughs> All right, let's do the uh, garage. So same thing in here. There's nothing in the ceilings or anything that I need to capture separately. So I'm just going to do a four corner shot and call it. Okay, I'm just gonna do the smaller rooms now, like the bathrooms and a little closet area back there. And all I'm gonna need is this uh, Godox V1 mounted on the camera straight, it's no big deal. And I always shoot uh, flash and full manual. So I usually get it right in, in two shots, right? Like I can see that it's one or two stops too bright. I just dial it down and then it's close enough. So bathrooms are usually pretty narrow. So I almost always have to mount the uh, camera in portrait mode. And then I'm gonna point the flash 
I'll put the ceiling, but you know, bounce the light, get that better light, right? So I'm gonna guess uh, for a small room like this, I think, I don't know, half power, if that. Yeah, half power. Perfect. All right, just go do uh, these two small rooms back here and we're done with the interior. This room here, I couldn't get the lights to come on. So it's pitch black. I'm roughly at about two stops underexposed, even with the flash at full power. So what I'm gonna do is just crank the ISO up. Let's see, this, this room, no lights again. It's so dark in this room, I'm having trouble focusing on the same spot twice. So what I'm gonna do is, I left my flashlight in the car, but I'm going to uh, just illuminate it with my phone. That should be more than enough light to, uh, to deal with that, right? Okay. This room actually took the longest because there's no light in here. <laughs> so for video, again, with commercial properties, the floors are usually not carpeted. They're either wood or, in this case, tile and concrete. And I can just kind of uh, roll around on this dolly to get nice, smooth shots. And even if the floor has some irregularities in it, uh, you know, the image stabilization in the OM-1 takes care of most of it. And then I just do cuts wherever the camera might jump a little bit. So this is just a uh, tripod dolly, right? And if you want to do this kind of work with video, think about, you know, the wheels. It's very important. So I got the largest ones I can without spending a fortune. These are uh, nice three inch wheels. And I think I only paid like 90 bucks for this. And it's pretty solid. All right, so I collapsed the tripod down and then you just tighten these in right here, like so. All right, so I don't need a flash for video work, obviously. Let's turn this thing on. Voila. Let me just put it into movie mode and double check. MIS-1, 4K60, 10-bit, auto ISO, F5.6. What I'm going to do is uh, calculate the uh, depth of field. But I use this app called, um, it's called uh, Hyperfocal Pro. 7 millimeters, 5.6. If I'm at six feet, everything from 1.4 feet to uh, infinity will be in focus. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, six. All right, so right about here. And then I'm going to line the camera right over, you know, roughly about where my foot was. I'm going to use SAF instead of CAF because I don't want the focus point to change. Now I can just push record. So as I'm turning this, the gimbal helps with smoothing out the action, right? Because logic. If I turn it, it doesn't completely stop on its own. Like if I stop, you see the gimbal still pans a little bit to recenter. So it makes the overall motion smoother. See? Pretty easy, right? And then I just need to go at a very slow pace. So I can always speed it up and post later. Sometimes I just stand in one corner and just tap the joystick on the gimbal to kind of pan very slowly like so, just to get a panning shot. Now I need to do uh, some photos and video of the outside of the property. And I can't use this dolly outside. It's just the concrete's too jittery, right? So um, I'm going to switch over to a monopod and just handhold the rest of the uh, gimbal shots. But I'm also going to do um, fake drone shot, and I'll show you how I do that. But anyway, this collapses down. You just pull this pull this pen. Try not to pinch your fingers, uh, like so. This is uh, the monopod that I use for work. I've been using this forever. If you go back to some of my first videos that I used to do the uh, 
talk about my real estate gear. This is the same one that I did like four or five years ago, and it's still working great. It's a Siru uh, P204S monopod. Again, I'm not sure they make this anymore, but there's a newer model, and they have carbon fiber models now too. All right, so it has the feet that come out, so I can just stand it. And the reason I use the feet is when I want to do pan shots, right? Where I just, um, what are, yeah, this is a panning shot, right? Turn the gimbal back on. Good. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of video out here, just a couple of panning shots, but then I'm going to do the uh, fake drone shots. I wanted to show you before I forget the, the smaller dolly I use. Sometimes I put the monopod, you know, inside here and roll around with the monopod and the gimbal. I don't use this very often, as you can see, it's still pretty clean. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, this is just a paint stick. I bought it at the hardware store for like 15 or 20 bucks, and then I got like this adapter. This was $10, it's a quarter 20 adapter. But this will give me 12 feet on the pole itself if I want to go that high and then I get another couple of feet because I'm going to be using this inside my car and I'm just going to attach my DJI Pocket Osmo and uh, to the top and then I can control it with my phone uh, from inside the car as I'm driving around if I tighten that up there we go All right, see, that's it. I don't think I need to go any higher. If I need to go higher, I can raise it a little bit, but that, that should probably be okay right there. I can just control this like so and go around. Ooh, I need some AC, it's hot. And don't let me forget to lock the building before I leave. I got the key in my pocket. Maybe we'll start from that end, go out. And sometimes I like to drive into the parking lot from the street, so I might try and do that too. Ooh. <laughs> I almost got the uh, gimbal caught in the tree there. So I don't want it too high because, you know, if there are any power lines, I'll get electrocuted. And I don't want it too low because then I might as well walk around, right? I don't have to touch the phone. I can just rotate the pole as I'm driving uh, if I want to do a little panning, right? All right, so I'm going to pan a little bit right now. Ah, got my car in the shot. All right, I think I'm going to go over to that side of the parking lot, but it's, it's probably about another five or six feet lower elevation, so I will have to raise the pole. Ooh, yeah, that looks good. Let's just start recording, and then we'll just do a circle. Okay, I'll just do a panning shot, and then I think I'm done. We'll get something to eat. All right, everyone, thanks for joining me today on another photo job. And I know it wasn't one of the Class A buildings that I sometimes get, but unfortunately, those are usually open and occupied, and I don't get a chance to show you a behind-the-scenes vlog. But they're still pretty representative by workflow, so I hope you got a good feel of what it's like to work as a commercial real estate photographer. And I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.